Hey friends, welcome to Brad's Beam. I may start trying to run this through the software that's on my computer and that's gonna be the introduction sound, sort of a beamy noise. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you for a second. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today and all the blessings you've given us. God, please continue to open our minds and pour yourself into us. Help us that we can be renewed by the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. Uh, give us the faith to believe and the eyes to see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, to answer yesterday's question and to present you with today's question, uh, the three kings of a unified Israel were Saul, David, and Solomon. Uh, I, I did see some names on some of the stuff. Uh, if you want to go ahead and, and research me on this, I would suggest reading from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10. This is where uh, Samuel takes a flask of oil. It, let me just read for you 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. Uh, then Samuel took the flask of oil, poured it on his, Saul's, Saul's head, kissed him and said, Has the Lord not anointed you to rule over his inheritance? So Saul is the first king of Israel anointed by Samuel. Uh, David worked for Saul for some time. And as the, the days went on, Saul got crazy. Saul went, went crazy. Uh, and then Samuel began to show David that he was going to be Israel's new king. Uh, Solomon was not David's first son. David was not the oldest son. And Solomon was not the oldest son. And after Solomon, his two sons, two of his sons, divided the kingdom from a unified Israel to a northern kingdom, Israel, and a southern kingdom, Judah. Um, <clears throat> and that, that's our answer of a unified kingdom. And, and the key words are unified kingdom, um, uh, we could name kings all day long, uh, but the key word in the question was a unified kingdom. Um, now, in in this same time frame, and this is very dear to my heart, the only handicapped person named in the Old Testament was who? Whom? Uh, who was the only handicapped person named in the Old Testament. And and it's right in here. I'll make it easy. He's the grandson of one of these kings. So, I'll leave it up to you to research that and find out. Now, let's turn our eyes towards Galatians. Uh, we're going to jump to G Galatians 3 today with one caveat. In chapter 2, verse 20, Paul wrote these words, and I, I find this very interesting and very moving. This is um, it's good stuff. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Um, a near-death experience will bring you very close to this verse right here. Uh, so... 
that's why I found that verse so very striking uh, right there off the bat. Um, but now I, I want us to move to chapter 3. And, and I want to read some of this. Uh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? This is the only thing I want to find out from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? So then, does he who provides you with the Spirit and works miracles among you do it by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Even so, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now, that's verse 6, and I want us to stop right there for just a minute. Abraham believed God's word. Abraham knew that a future Messiah was coming, and it was credited back to him. Uh, or reckoned uh, the the word here could also be credited a and this is where i get my uh christus victus christus yeah christus victus Cr christus victorious prior to jesus hanging on the cross all salvation was found in credit in, with the idea that in the future, the debt would be paid. Um, some of us have had credit struggles. Uh, too many credit cards, too many car payments, too many, too many cans of beer to actually pay my bills. Um, so I, I am not one that works a whole lot with credit. I, I don't, I kind of have the Dave Ramsey plan. If I can't pay cash for it, I don't need it. Um, if, if I can get credit at a 0% interest, I maybe will take that, but I still don't particularly care for it. To me, a, a, a pre-approved credit card is just the first step back to bankruptcy. Um, now, with that said, we know God is always going to pay God's debts. And so, from creation to Christ, the way I tend to view this, and probably the easiest way I can explain it, all those people that found salvation in God did not find it in the law. They found it in faith, in, in faith in a coming Messiah. And so... This, this whole time frame, everybody was looking forward to make the payment. So it, it, it worked out well that their salvation was bought and paid for on a credit card. The Jesus event happened. Jesus was born and lived a life. And, and one of these little nuggets that I learned from Dr. Bob Stamps, uh, Christ did not come and live a regular life to profane the holy. He came to make the profane holy. So everything we do in life, here's a little nugget, everything we do in life, we can do it as if we were doing it for Christ. And, and I believe that would make life a little easier to live for us. Now, back to the credit card. Everyone's salvation back then was paid for on a credit card. Um, Jesus came, lived life, died for us on a cross. In that one action, in, in dying on the cross, Jesus paid all that debt. Uh, uh, every, every credit card bill for salvation came due that day. Now, Moving forward from the cross, our salvation bank accounts are overflowing. 
um, and on death or on accepting Christ, I should have said, on accepting Christ, Jesus lays out that debit card. The thing about a debit card, the money is already in the bank. Our debts are already paid and we haven't even we don't even know what our debts are yet. And and so from the cross moving forward till now and even in the future, all of our debts are already paid. The the payment is already there. All we have to do is receive it in faith and and let Jesus pay that debt for us. I I love the old stories about Abraham, Abram and, and Sarah, and they get new names, Abraham and Sarah. I love the fact that the Bible says Sarah was a beautiful woman. Look, if there was one thing that was beat into me as a kid, it was if the Bible says it, it's true. So how good looking was this lady that even the Bible says she was good looking? Uh, so it, the, these ancient stories, and I, I say stories, don't misunderstand my words here. People's lives are written right here for us to read. And th this is very interesting to me. Um, so... I, it was credited or it was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Now look, this is a Jew writing back the way he understood what had happened with Abraham. So then he goes on. Paul goes on to say, Therefore, be sure that it is those who are of faith who are the sons of Abraham. There was no work that Abraham could do to find salvation. There is no salvation promise in the law and there is no salvation promise for us except in Jesus Christ. And that, that's the beauty of Jesus. Um, so Paul goes on to say, the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, all the nations will be blessed in you. And depending on how you see it, Abraham was just a dude living life. What particular, what was there particularly about him that God said, hey, I'm Abraham, I want you? Nothing. Nothing. There was nothing particular about Abraham. Go to Moses. What was there particular about Moses? Nothing. What was there about Noah? Nothing. There was nothing special about these men. God called. They answered. Is God calling one of you today? to do something, to step out of your comfort zone, I digress. So, <clears throat> verse 10, For as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law to perform them. Man, that's a high standard. I would dare say no one ever lived into all of the law except Jesus. I violate the law every time I pull out of my driveway. The speed limit right here on the street in front of my house is 30. You ever try to drive just 30? My car won't go that slow. I digress. I have broken just about uh, all, all the law. Let, let's just lay it up on the line. You break one, you break them all. Everything kind of holds together like a chain, right? And if you break this one, 
then all of them let go. So I've broken all of them and I hope you'll look in the mirror and admit the same thing. Um, verse 11, now that no one is justified by the law before God is evident for the righteous man shall live by faith. We live by faith, not by the law. It, the law can't, didn't I say this yesterday? The law has two purposes. A, to condemn. One law, purpose number one, to condemn us. Condemn us of our sin. And two, to point us to Christ. There is no other way to salvation except through Jesus. Uh, Christ redeemed us. Verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Man. He didn't have to do that, though. But he did it just for you and just for me. And then verse 14, in order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And, and we know that the Spirit is our comforter uh, and, and our, our hope and our strength and our connection to God. Um, in in uh, seminary, Dr. Callis used to teach us that the story of the gospel can be narrowed down to just the prepositions. And if you look in the Old Testament, God was over and in front of the people. Uh, for a better example of this, just look at Exodus um, by day, God was a, a pillar of fire, or no, a pillar of a cloud. And by night, he was a, a pillar of a fire. So over and in front, leading the people. And then you jump forward, and, and in Jesus, Jesus came to live with the people. And then at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit moved into the people so you got over and in front with god you've got with with jesus but with the holy spirit you have god's presence within inside us and that to me is is a, a very beautiful layout of of the bible the way it, the way it is first there's god then there's Jesus, and now we have the Holy Spirit. Same thing, over and in front, and then with, and then within. So it's it's a great, uh, a great analogy and a, and a great way to point that out, that the story is in the prepositions. Um, the question, who is the only crippled person mentioned in the Old Testament? Uh, and remember, friends, put your comments down below. Um, if you're on Facebook, please like our page, uh, rate our page, five star, four star, two star, whatever you think it is. Uh, subscribe on the YouTube channel. I, I guess I'm not, it may be the button over this way. I don't know. prayer requests, joys, concerns, comments, put them down in the, in the comment reader or comment. And, uh, I bid you blessings, friends. Have a good afternoon.